This is the Jason Walker Show. Two-time National Sports Media Association Montana Sportscaster of the Year and three-time loser, the Jason Walker Show. The best local and statewide sports coverage featuring the biggest guests from Montana. Flint Rasmussen uh, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. He's freaking exhausting, too. You used to dance a lot more. Yeah, I know, lady. I'm 51 years old now. The NAI Hall of Famer Mike Van Deese joining us here Jason Walker Show. And is it just a deal where quarterbacks have to be good golfers? Well, it's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weights. They don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course and at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandel, our guest here. Jason Walker. Deal or no deal? The Jason Walker Show. Broadcasting from the Major Mortgage Man Cave. Here's Jason Walker. Happy Thursday. It is the Jason Walker Show. Inside the Major Mortgage Man Cave, we are presented by Capital Collision Center. Montana State Law it is, uh, says it is your vehicle. It is your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center. Senator Steve Daines will join us coming up in about uh, 20 uh, uh, minutes or so. We will also talk with Director of the Shark NATO franchise, Anthony C. Ferrante. And uh, he also directed the uh, show, the movie, uh, uh, The Bows of Hollywood, which, uh, or Bows of Holly, rather, which we uh, talked to the lead actress, Jennifer Freeman, last week. But uh, Anthony will join us. Also, we are going to chat with national champion from Montana State University, The Mop, Trevor Funseth, coming up. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Um, in fact, just in a, a short amount of time, let's start with our daily COVID update. By the way, you can listen on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Podbean, Network One Sports, Twitter, uh, Treasure State Radio. We're kind of everywhere. Just go to jasonwalkershow.com and uh, down, or, uh, you can click on literally everything that will take you to where we, uh, where we are. Um, and you can email us, Jason at JasonWalkerShow.com. You can Facebook us. You can tweet us at JWalkerSports. All right. Uh, trying to get online here on Treasure State Radio. That's why. Okay, hold on a second. We'll get this figured out. Um, there we go. All right. I've got to put this back. Seriously need somebody smart to run the uh, computer system. <laughs> oh my goodness all right let's try this again all right there we go treasure state radio we're on now 766 new covid cases reported today we are up to 75,483 total 849 deaths 306 in the hospital 9,241 active 65,393 have recovered that's our covid update because of covid we have another Division II conference canceling its basketball seasons. It is the Great Northwest Athletic Conference, the GNAC, including MSU Billings, which announced last month that it, along with Alaska, Anchorage, Central Washington, Simon Fraser, Western Oregon, and Western Washington, would not play. Uh, Alaska Fairbanks and Seattle Pacific decided in the, the last week that they are not going to participate so eight of the 10 don't plan on uh, anything. They can independently, teams can, schedule games after January 7th. But it, it, it's NCAA policies, local public health guidelines. It's just, it's a, it's a cluster. And then uh, they still don't know what they're going to do for their spring seasons. But we'll keep you updated for sure. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, saw this. Uh, this is, is we... Approach the winter sports season. This comes from uh, Tim McMahon, Activities Director, Helena Public Schools. The uh, Okay, so here's the update for winter sports. Uh, the Lewis and Clark Public Health says that at this time, gatherings larger than 25 are not being approved within the county. So therefore, home 
families only will be able to watch the student athlete participate basketball, wrestling, swimming, but it will not distribute the school district more than 25 passes per game. Uh, this will go into effect and, and remain in effect until gathering sizes can be increased. Don't get mad at Tim McMahon. Don't get mad at the health department. Just follow the rules and you'll get to go watch some games. All right. Um, so last night, an unbelievable thing happened. The 13th national championship in Montana State history. The boys from MSU, CMR, claimed a national championship, getting past Grand Canyon University. And I feel like we are a big part of that. We've been following the story since the beginning. We've had uh, Trevor Funseth on the mop a few times, and he joins us now on the Jason Walker Show on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline to discuss winning the national championship, what it means, and what's next moving forward for the national champion Bobcats of Montana State University. All right, man. Um, it is uh, the morning after, and I feel like I feel like a guy that's uh, you know like Dan Patrick show talking to um, uh, like the Super Bowl champ the day after they win. Congratulations, national champ. How's that sound? Um, still don't quite believe that it's real, but it's incredible. Um, were you the one that had that closed it out again? Were you? The, did you win the championship for the team? Uh, it was a team effort. We, we did have a, a clutch victory at the end, but I wouldn't say it was me. Um, take me through last night, the three hour battle against Grand Canyon university. Uh, like I said, just take me through it and explain exactly how you guys ended up as champs. We started out super hot, like one of the best games you could possibly put up. So it was a good place to start. And then we were really slow the rest of the night and they crept all the way back in and actually passed us. So we needed another good one uh, to take the lead back and we were about to lose it. And one of our teammates pulled something out of the bag of tricks and we ended up getting that victory too. And we barely beat them. Well, you guys, um, the Cinderella story, this is like Hoosiers, man. You know, the team that wasn't supposed to went away, went and did it all. Yeah, I mean, we were a 14 seed, and of course, last night after the tournament, you know, we do interviews, we're talking to a bunch of people, and after a couple hours of talking to people, it's just me, Braden, Tyler, my two teammates left in our call, and there's just a moment of silence, and Braden goes, what the hell just happened? <laughs> okay, so who is who is Braden? Is it Gracious or the yeah. uh, Commoda? Braden is Gracious. Commodore is Kyler. Okay. And we know you as the mop, which is uh, you, you were uh, the spokesperson for the team the entire, uh, the, the entire run. But, um, yeah, seriously, what the hell did just happen? You guys won a national championship. And it's just awesome. Uh, the guys from Barstool, I'm sure, just jacked about everything be the way it turned out. Oh, there's, uh, you couldn't have written a better ter tournament entertainment-wise, you know, not the entertaining team, but also the underdog team keeps pulling off these last second upsets. It's like a movie. <laughs> um, the support was awesome. I got pictures and videos. The uh, Bar 9 in Bozeman had a viewing party. The mm -hmm. Sting in Great Falls had a viewing party. I mean, this was Montana deal. <laughs> well, I just got off the phone with Senator Steve Daines. We were talking about other stuff. But <laughs> but I said, as a Bobcat, you got to be, you know, help me out. We got to get a banner hung in the field house. He is behind it. He is all in. So we're going to try to make this happen because this is technically the 13th national championship at Montana State. And what school wouldn't want to count another national championship, you know? Exactly. Uh, and, you know, over there on the other side of the hill, they, they, they have two. That's it. That's all they have. Right. So uh, the more that Montana State can add up in those rafters, the better, right? Oh, we're happy to be a part of it. I talked to Danes's son actually messaged me saying how, <laughs> how much he was watching and how excited he was about all of it. 
<laughs> it is so cool. Trevor Funseth, uh, the mop, joining us, national champ. How much, um, how much time off are you guys going to take from playing video games now? Well, I'm hoping that I will take in air quotes, time off until the beginning of January. There might be some special appearances if, you know, we got some big names to play with, but we're looking to take at least two weeks to, to spend time with family here. So you're not going to play. You're going to give the fingers a rest while you're at home uh, in Great Falls. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's important for your physical and mental health. Absolutely. Um, how's the celebrityism with uh, the models calling you and all of this? Yeah, it's hard to handle. I had to get a second phone, just too much going on, but Charles has helped me take care of all that. Charles, uh, the butler, uh, how much of a big role did he really have in all of this? Because, you know, we saw the videos of the massages that he that you guys were getting, uh, especially you, but uh, how, how much of a role did he have? Um, he has nothing to do with the gameplay, but in terms of putting on a show, he's vital, not only for his appearances, but... A lot of the other videos I made, he had a creative hand in or was doing the camera work, so he was a big part of this run. Uh, I love it. Are you really a, a good horseback rider? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good. Braden is terrible, and you couldn't tell in the video, but as soon as it said cut, he's like, get me off. <laughs> that was awesome because I, I aired that, I think it was Monday, um, and by the way, I aired the uh, hype video twice yesterday. So, uh, I appreciate you asking me to be a part of that, but, um, that was a lot of fun. And those guys over at Barstool did a great job putting that thing together. You crushed that hype video. And I think it has about 150,000 views. It did really well. Oh my goodness. There's just so many, I, I mean, it's, I, I, I saw one of the things underneath the Barstool. It was, uh, the guy from revenge of the nerds and they're like nerds. Um, <laughs> but this is, you guys are just, I mean, the following that this took off and not just in the state of Montana, but really across the country. I mean, nobody expected this, right? No, I, it's unbelievable. It really, the people at, at Barstool didn't expect it. Our own team didn't expect it. My mom didn't expect it. <laughs> it's just, I mean, the amount of messages from across the country that I saw pouring in over the last couple of weeks for you guys. It's, it's ridiculous, and it really is a Cinderella story that people bought into. Yeah, the tweets. and the, Well, I guess the only person that did expect it was you. I told Well, you know, I said it. We talked, what, three weeks ago? And yeah. And you made it to, through the Fatal Four. You made it to the championship. Well, we got you into um, the, you know, I told you it was going to happen, national champs, last week. It, was, it, it couldn't have gone better. It was a last minute victory again, just like you would want it to be. Absolutely. Um, I'll, well, I asked you last week to just blow it away early um, <laughs> and not have this heart attack, but uh, I mean, viewing parties for college gaming championship. Come on. Yeah. I'm the black Eagle center or community center in black Eagle. It was all <laughs> over. I'm getting Facebook posts from people I haven't talked to in a decade. Uh, are you going to uh, stop by the school and see Cislo and, and, and uh, Coach Cislo and be like, hey, Coach, national champ right here? I, I'm going to have to. And, there, you know, I know we're not playing for CM, but there might have to be a CMR banner as well. i got to talk Ooh, to them. That is really good because you guys all from CMR, the, the, the three players, and then, of course, uh, Charles the butler. Um, I love it. I love this. We got know. I don't know what teacher it was, but somebody at CMR made a Charlie M. Russell Twitch account and was in the chat cheering us on last night. Oh, my gosh. That is awesome. How much of that do you guys <laughs> actually see? Uh, I, Braden and Kyler see none of it, but because I'm the one streaming, I see all of it. I see the whole live chat. That is awesome. So take me through this. Explain how that works if they're not part of it, like, but they are. Because they're in a different well, rooms. They're in a, a different city. Um, I we are we're in the same game. I have uh, two monitors basically. On one monitor is what I'm playing. The other monitor is my computer that I'm using to stream it, and I can see the live chat. So the viewers can only actually see my perspective. They can't see what Braden and Kyler are seeing. Okay. So that's basically how it works. So they were in Gray Falls while you were well, the whole time you guys were playing. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is absolutely nuts. Um, and yeah. I, I know technology and all of that stuff is how it works, but it's just, so how come they're not part of what everybody else sees? Uh, we just decided that, you know, you can only see one perspective. So okay. if it's going to be someone, it should probably be the mop because that's what the people want. <laughs> people want the mop. People got the mop. Uh, is there a world tour planned? Uh, there are discussions being had. People that stuck around after we won the national championship. Uh, Barstool had this pre-made video. And he basically offered me to join their team. That was pretty cool. So things are coming. That's very awesome. Uh, you mentioned real quick uh, in January, maybe some big names you guys are going to play against. Uh, yeah, but I, I can't speak on anything yet. All okay. I can say is this is not the end. I love it. Is there going to be the same team to repeat na- next year? Yes, if we're all still eligible. You know, we got to, you know, might have to get some red shirt. Yeah, we'll have to look at the NCAA eligibility. <laughs> is there recruiting going on? Always. Nobody's spot is ever secure, and they know that. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, it has been a pleasure, Trevor, to uh, to follow you guys the last few weeks and uh, really watch it since it's an inception. It seems like forever ago, but uh, you guys get it done. The national champion, the 14th seed, I think the first 14 seed to win a national championship in NCAA history. It has to be. And thank you for having me on and for helping us out with the videos. You've been great. Well, I appreciate it, my man, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll keep doing whatever I can to promote you guys and, uh, and just have some fun. But enjoy the holidays. Merry Christmas. Congratulations. And we're not done. We're going to get that banner hung up one way or another. Absolutely. Thank you very much. So uh, there you go. Um, oh, wait. We do have breaking news from... Barstool game time. Breaking news here. You ready for this? There is apparently going to be an investigation. Um, Some serious allegations have been uh, thrown out of cheating against the boys from Montana State. And uh, so now there'll be a, a full statements coming out soon. But 40 minutes ago, this just came out. Uh, I emailed... Um, or I texted Trevor Funtz at the mop and said, what, what is this about? And he said, um, they didn't cheat. It was, uh, something in, uh, some game mechanic, not against the rules, but they didn't cheat. And then Ebates, who is from Grand Canyon university, he's going to be on the show tomorrow because he's the one that apparently discovered this. And, uh, he's been with Barstool and talking with them, and uh, he's really bummed that the, somebody would do this in a call of duty. Now, these are all allegations. It's all alleged. Barstool's got to do its investigation, Barstool game time. Um, but we'll keep you updated. Now, tomorrow, Ebates from Grand Canyon University will be on the show. So this isn't, is this, this isn't done. This is going to be interesting. We'll follow it. All the way to the end right here on the Jason Walker Show. Quick break. Coming back. Baseball is returning to Montana in the Pioneer League. Not like the Pioneer League was, but in a partnership with Major League Baseball. And one of the main guys behind that was Senator Steve Daines. And he'll join us next and tell us exactly how him and a bipartisan committee got it done. That's next. Jason Walker Show coming right back. Brought to you by Capital Collision Center. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle, and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. 
Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918, or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings, or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Welcome back. Jason Walker Show on a Thursday, presented by Capital Collision Center, hanging out. Major Mortgage Man Cave, still to come. Anthony C. Ferrante, the director of Bows of Holly on Ion Television Saturday or Sunday night and again Christmas Eve. He also directed the Sharknado franchise. He'll join us coming up in about uh, 15 minutes or so. Uh, We will keep you updated on the cheating allegations. Cheating allegations from uh, Barstool Game Time is doing an investigation. Grand Canyon University alleging that Montana State cheated in the college gaming championships to win a national championship. So we'll talk to Ebates tomorrow. We reached out to Barstool Game Time. And uh, we did get a message from uh, the mop who said, no, there was no cheating. And I tend to believe the boys from CMR a little more than the boys from Arizona. This segment brought to you by Rutgers Furniture. Make the quality choice for your home at Rutgers Furniture. 1010 Dearborn in Helena. Baseball is going to be back in the state of Montana. And that is great news. And it wasn't just... uh, One side or the other of the aisle that made this happen, it was the entire delegation, congressional delegation from the state of Montana, working together with Major League Baseball and Minor League Baseball to save the Pioneer League in one way or another, and they did. And uh, joining us now to talk about that and the Pfizer vaccine, which has been rolled out across the state, Senator Steve Daines now on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. How are you, Senator? Doing well, thanks. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. Uh, Congrats on re-election. But I wanted to, uh, let's chat about baseball real quick. The Pioneer League is still the Pioneer League with some some conditions. It's not the same, but you guys did a lot of help with this congressional committee to make things happen. And uh, congratulations on saving baseball in the state of Montana. Hey, well, th- thanks, Jason. You know, um, we just want to make sure that we're going to hear play ball again in the spring and, uh, and, and keep these, these great teams playing baseball in Montana. And so it's, uh, it's, it's a great step forward. You know, we were at, uh, at, at, at the brink here of losing baseball in Montana in terms of, uh, of minor league baseball. And thankfully we've got, uh, we've got support now. MLB will continue to work with, with us here, and uh, that, that, that's good news for Montana. No, it definitely is, especially Great Falls, Missoula, and, and, and Billings. And, uh, you know, I'd like to think that, that you and, and uh, Governor-elect Gianforte, along with uh, Senator Tester, you guys all together really made this happen. So I, I think without your support, I don't, know if, I don't think we have baseball in, in, starting next year in Montana. 
Well, it, it was, you know, I guess to, to quote an old cliche, it was a team team effort. It really was. Yeah. You bring the entire delegation together, right? You know, it, it, last time I checked, Jason, baseball is not a partisan sport. There's, uh, you know, there may be red jerseys and blue jerseys, but it's not because you're a Democrat or Republican. Mm-hmm. And and I think that was important. We had the entire delegation uh, with one voice, literally uh, on phone calls. I, I had some of these MLB execs in my office sitting with me here in Washington, D.C., and I laid it out for them what we needed to have in Montana, and we wanted them to continue to support what we have out there. So uh, congrats to the team, truly, that we got this done. And the uh, the winners here are the fans back in Montana who, uh, who love baseball. Senator Steve Daines joining us, Jason Walker Show. Uh, you were a part of the, uh, the big news lately is the, the vaccine has been rolled out, Operation Warp Speed. It happened. Nobody believed it. Uh, but it did happen. Take me through your Pfizer trials that you went through first. Yeah, well, you know, I'm an old Bozeman kid. I went to kindergarten through college. I'm a hawk and a bobcat, and and my folks have been there for a long, long time. They've lived in Bozeman since 1964, and my mom was always staying close to what's going on with the vaccine. She she asked me about it all the time. Steve, what's going on with the vaccine? I said, well, we're working on it. Don't have any more details. Well, one day my mom called me up. This is August. She said, I heard from my doctor that Pfizer is going to use Bozeman as one of their trial sites. And so Pfizer had, I think, 30 or 40 trial sites around the country as they were in this phase three clinical trial. They needed 40,000 people to enroll in this phase three trial. Bozeman was one of the sites they picked. They were looking for what they call hot spots. You know, unfortunately, Montana back in August and including Bozeman was one of the hot spots with, with COVID uh, pandemic. So we just went online. My wife and I went online and enrolled. My mom told me about a website. We enrolled to be a, a trial participant, and we were selected, and we both got a vaccine. Now, it's a blind trial, which means about half of the participants get the placebo, half get the actual vaccine. They don't tell you. In fact, even the person administering the vaccine doesn't know it. It's kept very, very tightly you know, kind of secret mm-hmm. because they don't want you to know which one you get. Well, let me tell you something. I had a little bit of a sore arm, um, and uh, uh, I got the vaccine on August 27th. Three weeks later, I got the booster, and I got an antibody test in October, Jason, and I've got the antibodies. So uh, looks like I got the actual vaccine. Uh, my wife did not, unfortunately. <laughs> she wanted it. <laughs> but, but, but we were both part of the science because that you have to go through that step to get the vaccine approved. The FDA approved it this month, and as you are hearing all across the news, Montanans, particularly starting with our frontline healthcare heroes, are starting to get the vaccine. So I'm just thrilled. And you know, my background at Montana State was chemical engineering, and I I, uh, I used my background in engineering. I worked for Procter & Gamble when I came out of college for 13 years. I used to launch FDA-regulated products, and I used that background in, in legislative funding back in March because I knew that if we work parallel paths, in other words, if we provide some financial certainty to start ordering materials and producing the vaccine in parallel with the testing of the vaccine, if the testing came out positive, we then would save six months of time to getting the vaccine out to Montanans. That's exactly what happened. Had we not done that back in March, we'd probably be waiting until May or June to see those first vaccine shipments. This is a big deal to put an end to the pandemic. Oh, it definitely is. Are you happy with the way it's rolled out and the way that it's it's started to take place in Montana, especially in the bigger cities? Well, look, um, this is a big shout out starting at the top with President Trump, Vice President Pence. You know, they had that Operation Warp Speed. Mm-hmm. The, the, the mainstream media ridiculed the president. They said, yeah, we're never going to get it out in time. This will be sometime in late 2021. I was at the White House for the President's Vaccine Summit last week. And he, they actually played the clips of kind of the, the Main Street media folks uh, poo-pooing this plan, saying it'll never happen. Guess what? It happened. And the science and technology drove it. And I'm really happy to see, you're seeing the images here of, of uh, our frontline healthcare workers starting to get the vaccine. That's really good news for Montana. So we're going to start with our frontline healthcare workers who we've got to protect because they're on the front lines of this battle. And then we'll also be working with our senior citizens because they're the ones who are most vulnerable. I think we'll have 
uh, 20 to 40 million vaccines ready to go by the end of uh, the month. And then coming into the end of the first quarter, March of next year, there'll be over 100 million vaccines ready to go for the American people. That's how we're going to end this pandemic and get back to normal, Jason. Senator Steve Daines, our guest here, Jason Walker Show. Continuing with the vaccine, Senator, um, how, how uh, it, it's, every, everybody wants it. So it's, it's tough to decide who gets it and, and how much conversation has gone into, okay, where are we starting with who gets it, like our frontline health care? And they absolutely get it first. Uh, but when it comes to, you know, everybody else, what's the rollout as far as, you know, somebody that's healthy in their 20s? Yeah, well, I tell you, um, the CDC and working with the uh, these vaccine uh, companies have been, we've been working on this plan for many, many months, anticipating we'd be where we're at today. So they they have a kind of you know a priority chart laid out, and it looks like you know by the time we get into uh, springtime, we're going to have enough vaccine so that those who want it will be able to receive it. It's looking that way, and you know the good news is Moderna is likely going to get the green light from the FDA today. Remember that Pfizer got the green light last week. Moderna is going to get the green light, we think, today or tomorrow. And then we've got a couple others. We've got AstraZeneca and we've got Johnson Johnson. Mm. They're all looking to be ready to go here by January, February of next year, probably say February. By the way, AstraZeneca was doing some of their trial work in Butte, believe it or not. So Montana played a big part here. Bozeman was Pfizer. AstraZeneca um, was Butte. And, and so we've got all these vaccines that are going to be coming out. By the time we get into, I think, the summer, we're going to have an abundant um, inventory of vaccines, and those who want to uh, get it will be able to receive it. Final question on vaccine, but tell me, with your chemical engineering background, why does the it have to be stored at 90 below zero? Well, I, mean, I, I don't understand. Man. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's cold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that is cold. You know, that, that's as cold as it gets and cut back in half or sometimes, you know. <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. so, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, uh, uh, that, that goes back to the, 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 the technology that they've developed here is remarkable. It's called I won't get into uh, uh, geeking out here on on chemistry, but it's called M. It's called it's called mRNA technology. Now the Bobcats understand this. Grizzlies, their eyes are going to glass over. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> but it's called, <laughs> it's called it's called it's called mRNA technology, and uh, and 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 these, this is really breakthroughs in the way that vaccines work today. It, it's it's just amazing if you get into the science behind it. But in order to protect the active ingredient that does this, they've got to store it in these cold temperatures, but they have built supply chains to accommodate for that. And so when you look at the hostels receive this, they, they just say, yeah, we know how to do this. This is no, nothing new in terms of cold temperature storage, but the, at the uh, Moderna vaccine does not require that cold temperature. Neither does Johnson and Johnson okay. and, uh, and AstraZeneca. So the first, the first horse out of the gate will need these extra cold temperatures, but in terms of the experience of getting the vaccine, they, they, they warm it back up to, to, uh, to room temperature before they administer it to you. So I remember when I got my shot, I can tell you it felt just like getting a flu shot. For those who get the flu shot every year, it was, it was a similar experience. Senator Steve Daines, our guest, Jason Walker Show. Okay, last question. We know how good Montana State football has been with three national championships, rodeo with eight. There was a national championship last night that Montana State, a bunch of kids from CMR, it's uh, the college gaming championships. And uh, I think we need to figure out a way to get um, a banner hung in the field house for these kids. Is there any way we can, we can start working on that, Senator? Hey, hey, I'm all in as a as a bobcat with uh, three of my four kids are bobcats. Our daughter was the homecoming queen, in yep, fact, uh, yep. several years ago. Let me tell you, my my uh, my blood is blue and gold. And uh, let me see what we can do here to continue to get, uh, count me up, <laughs> count me in. In fact, I'm wearing a blue and gold tie right now. Tie right now, Jade. Oh, if you saw my tie, it looks like a bobcat tie. No, it is. It is. It's true. So uh, I'm all in. Let's do it. Senator Daines, uh, congratulations on the re-election. Happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. Looking forward to chatting with you in uh, the new year. And uh, thanks for the update on the vaccine. Yeah, you bet, Jason. Merry Christmas to everybody as well. That is uh, Senator Steve Daines joining us, Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline. And um, we're going to we're gonna get these boys from Barstool taking, or uh, MSU taking care of Barstool, MSU, or Montana, but uh, Bobcats, national title. Uh, but there you go. There's the update on the vaccine. Senator Daines, um, a big part of that as well, and a big part of saving baseball 
in the state of Montana. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk movies. And how do you go, what's the process to direct a movie? Director, writer, he is an actor, he is a, a musician as well. Anthony C. Ferrante will join us next here on the Jason Walker Show. Don't go anywhere. Jason Walker here, and I want to tell you about a great place that's going to make you feel better in just an hour. Ocean Spirit Massage. From deep tissue to hot stone and more, Ocean Spirit Massage will get your sore, tired muscles feeling like new. Whether you overdid it working out, hiking the hills, playing golf, whatever it is, or even if you're pregnant, you will walk away feeling better than you have in years. Book now for yourself or make it a couple's massage. And gift certificates are always available as well. Visit OceanSpiritMassage.com or call 417-0542. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po' boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle, and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918, or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Welcome back to the Jason Walker Show. Uh, just hanging out with Santa. What are we... Uh, Seven shopping days left till Christmas. Week away. This is a week from tonight is Christmas Eve. And then Christmas Day, a week from tomorrow. Santa hanging out with his Bobcat helmet. So last week, remember, we talked to Jennifer Freeman. She was uh, Claire Kyle on the TV show My Wife and Kids with Damon Wayans. And uh, she's starring in a new uh, holiday movie called The Bows of Holly on Ion Television. Well, I got a great follow from the director of that movie, Anthony C. uh, Ferrante, and we started talking last week on social media and decided, you know what? He's had a pretty cool career, and let's have him on. I mean, this is the guy that directed six Sharknados, the TVs, movies, right, on sci-fi? I mean, they were awesome. So I thought, who better to talk to than a director from Hollywood. His name is Anthony C. Ferrante, and he joins us now on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. First off, Anthony, uh, congratulations on the uh, the movie, and thank you for joining us. And uh, let's start there. Let's start with the movie, Bows of Hollywood, um, because this, or Bows of Holly, but this is, um, yeah. I had Jennifer Freeman on last week, and uh, she was fantastic. Uh, but this is uh, one of the movies that isn't up your normal realm of directing looking at your IMDb. Yeah, but definitely. um, It's very, very different. Um, You know, normally I'm used to doing uh, horror films or uh, thrillers or or tornadoes. So um, that's what makes this kind of cool and kind of exciting. But, but the thing is that um, even though, yeah, it's a romantic comedy, I mean, there's, even with the ridiculousness of Sharknado, there was always a love story at the core of, of those movies. It was absurd uh, love story, but it was still a love story. And, 
actually there was a lot of comedy in those movies. So, I mean, I've always leaned, uh, you know, everything I do, I have a, a dark sense of humor. So it kind of, you know, permeates everything a little bit. Um, and a lot of the shorts I used to do before I, I started uh, directing features, you know, had a lot of comedy elements. So it, it's, it's in the wheelhouse, but it's definitely, I could say, it's the first movie I've ever directed where no one dies in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for people that don't know, you did all of the, what, 18 Sharknados, it feels like. I think there was six. Is that? 700, oh. seven, seven, 742 Sharknado movies. 742, yes. okay. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, no, we, yeah, we did, we did, we did six of them. Six. Um, uh, and I've seen every one of them. Yeah. They're fantastic. Uh, but oh, thank you. <laughs> we're chatting Bows of Holly with director Anthony C. Ferrante uh, joining us. And, uh, and what's great about this movie and talking with Jennifer is the love story, like you said, and there's some comedy yeah. and, and it's, it's a typical Hollywood Christian or Christmas movie, but Yet it's not because of the storyline. And I, I just, I, I, I've only seen the trailer. I didn't get a chance to watch it, but I am going to watch it on Sunday night. But um, this is just a love story, like you said, that evolves over the course of a couple of hours. Yeah, or I guess a couple of days um, uh, in, in, in the film. But it's, you know, look, there's the, these Christmas movies uh, for all the different networks. This is airing on Ion TV. Um, you can find, uh, uh, I think it's going to air, was it a nine, uh, eight central on Sunday. It's re-airing. Um, the move, you know, there, there's a, there's a formula to these things. It's, it, there, there's a standard formula. They make like 30 or 40 of these movies between all the different networks. It's just, it's a popular thing. The trick is how can you approach it and, you know, still, uh, pay, uh, uh, pay uh, tribute to those tropes and then make it your own thing. And I think um, one of the strengths of the movie, we had a really strong script, but we also had this amazing cast. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the cast really brought an authenticity to it. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's very different and unique and, and quirky in how, you know, John Carr, who plays uh, Jake, he. He's very uh, reserved, yet, you know. He's got a sort of a, a, a dry sense of humor, which is sort of more in sync with mine. Uh, Jennifer, who plays Holly, our lead, uh, there, there's this very Tyler uh, Moore quality to Jennifer. There, there's one scene where she gets off this train, and all I kept thinking is this opening of the Mary Tyler Moore show. And freaking just, there's just like, you know, she just, she just smiles when she walks off of there. You know, I always kept thinking, you know, you know, turns the world on with a smile. You know, it's like mm -hmm. that song. You know, it's like you know, she just you just go, I, I really like this character. She might, you know, she might be this A personality, uh, the character, yet, yet Jennifer manages to find a realness to it. And then um, Michael uh, uh, Copon, who plays Phil, you know, he's bringing more of that kind of Chris Pratty kind of like, you know, there's a little there's a little edginess to what he does. He's not the most likable guy, but you like him because of the way his delivery. And then um, Nikki Lee, who plays... Uh, uh, Tiffany, you know, we started off as sort of a, in the script, a little more of an airheady character. We made her interesting and quirky too. So you have these groups of people and you put them all together and it's a really nice balance and mix. And they all came to play. They all wanted to make everything work. And, you know, we worked really well together to try to try to find those uh, motions and try to find those little uh, bits of humor. And because a lot of uh, the Shark Tank movies were, <laughs> I hate to say, were literally rewritten on the fly or written on the fly. Um, you know, I, I, I'm pretty good about tossing out lines, and coming up with things on the spot. So th right. there's, a, there's a lot of just small moments that came from um, staff for doing something going, hey, let's, 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 let's just do this. And they were fast to be able to just pick it up. Um, one of them in particular was uh, uh, there's a line in there that Johnny says, or the character, uh, the Jake character says something about that. Uh, talking with Jennifer about Christmas and how, you know, she stopped believing in Santa when she was 12 and then and scripted and what he says is, uh, oh yeah, I still believe in Santa. And I go, and then when I was watching the first thing, oh no, we got to add on top of that. So I, I tossed in the line, I still believe in Santa uh, and one day I'm going to catch him. And when I, do, it's going to be Christmas every day in my house. Wow. <laughs> and so I threw that, I threw that word vomit at him and he just, he, without missing a beat in the second take, he nailed it. And so through the course of the movie, because of that one line, I br had brought this uh, sort of Santa Claus mascot on, my, on a road trip, uh, this little tiny Santa. 
And so it was going to be in the movie, I guess, at some point. And so he gives it to her as a present, you know, say, here's something for more decorations. And he goes, you're serious. You actually kidnapped Santa. So that became a, a recurring gag throughout the whole movie based on just some of the spur of the moment thing that happened. And I think those little moments, those little moments of realism amidst the tropes, you know, that authenticity, I think, you know, makes it kind of endearing and charming. It's also very old fashioned. I mean, there's a very, a lot of these are a little bit more modern, you know, these, these romantic uh, Christmas movies or, you know, the corporate executives and this and that. And this is, there, there's a very, uh, it's a wonderful likey kind of like, it's just the own little bubble of a movie. Uh, which is awesome. I mean, that's just fantastic. And when, and talking to Jennifer last week and, and who plays Holly in Bows of Holly, but she said, I asked her, I said, how tough was it to get into a Christmas spirit in a movie that was filmed in August when it's, you know, blazing hot and she ended up getting sick. But um, what's it like as a director? Because you have to make those actors and, and help those actors get into a, 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 an attitude that's five months down the road and the weather's totally different. Well, we had, we had a great crew in Colorado and our art team was, was the best. And, you know, we had tons of Christmas um, decorations and stuff. So, I think I think that at least look and feel wise when they were in the scenes, um, you know, you at least felt you were, you know, you, you were there. Because I look, we're from also. I, I know I know that Johnny spent some time here. I think he was back. I think he lives here now. And then uh, Jennifer lives in L.A. You know, our <laughs> our winters are are our falls or our you know partial summers. So I mean, right now, uh, you know, I'm walking around my street and you know there's some clouds, but I'm in shorts and sandals. <laughs> So, 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 you know, so the idea of sunny Christmas time is sort of a normal thing for us. So I don't think that's a big disconnect. I think the hardest thing for me though, just as a director was the fact that we, like a Sharknado movie, we had to avoid certain things because it said summer. So like we could decorate all these Christmas things that the side had all this green trees. So either we had to frame it out or we had to say, this is going to be a visual effect. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's over 300 visual effects shots in this movie, which is, I think, more than what we had on the first Sharknado. It's all invisible stuff to give that look of Christmas. We have just this great team working on the show. Um, Glenn Campbell, uh, our visual effects supervisor, and then the producer, Dave Michaelette, did some effects as well, VFX. And it's invisible stuff. So having that experience working on heavy VFX movies came in handy when I was trying to visualize a scene and going, okay, that's going to be digital and that's not, you know, we have that line there. Um, and there was one day that we brought out snow. We had a snow guy come in and what well, two days where they, we had to have a snowball fight and a, and a snowman village thing. And we had to, you know, put fake snow, which melted, by, you know, by, by midday. Um, but you know, that we had to do that because we needed it for the movie that, sure. that we couldn't say. Uh, when you're directing a movie, how long does it take before you actually get on set first day to prepare and, and, and go through a script and read in your mind and visualize how you think this movie is going to go and whatever movie it is. It depends. You know, every movie is different. I mean, sometimes I, you know, if I'm a writer on a script then I, I am already visualizing when I, when I'm writing it on the page, if I'm rewriting a script, um, you know, it's the same process. Uh, there was a lot of involvement in the Sharknados, um, you know, where, uh, you know, I, I did a lot of work on the first one, um, script wise and storyboards to kind of, you know, solidify what the vision of that was. And then on the subsequent movies, you know, we'd go, Hey, we want to do a step piece, the white house, white house down the charts. And then we would come up off all these gags. So that's one part of it. Um, the other part of it is, uh, uh, I got hired late in the game. Um, I was aware of the script beforehand, and I, I talked to the producer and gave them some notes and ideas I had, but I wasn't officially hired until about a week and a half before we started shooting. Mm. So um, so a lot of that was uh, coming into the, the mix, looking at the script, talking with Jennifer. Um, she was, and the moment she was hired, we talked about the stuff that I, I wanted uh, in, you know, to do a character, and, and it matched with what she wanted to do a character. And so we did a couple of Zoom calls where we, read the script and go, okay, what's what? Okay, I don't know this one. I don't know that. So working with performance side of it. Then the next piece of the puzzle is the location. So a lot of times when we did Sharknado movies, uh, you know, we would 
go find a location and we would go, oh, okay, we're going to actually be here. And then we would come up with gags for it. And so I had in my head how I was going to do it. So when we started scouting in uh, Colorado, I was starting to see the town and figure out how I would do the town and, and pull that together. Um, so it's, a, it's sort of a balance. And then um, in the polishes that happened on the strip, before we went to uh, set, I would I usually kind of rewrite the script a hair, not necessarily for content, but for the location. So, like, if the location says Holly is at the card shop, I might go, uh, we pan off of uh, cards to reveal Holly and her sister at the counter. Mm. So that way, since we don't have a lot of time, um, you know, on set, it's already everybody has an understanding of the script of what I'm trying to accomplish because now that I, I kind of, it's kind of my version of a storyboard. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, maybe sometimes it is go interior house, but there isn't the exterior and, you know, you got to deal with that. Um, a lot of stuff is character based. The Phil character in the movie, he definitely comes off very douchey and that's intentional because he is a douchebag to, to the Jennifer <laughs> character. But, 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 but but within the douchiness, there has to be some humanity. And there's there's one scene where he was outside going to his ex-girlfriend's place after he dumps uh, Jennifer. And in the script, he just goes up to the house, and that was it. But I go, you know, he needs when he pulls up in the car, he needs to pull out his phone, and he needs to look at the phone, and he has to he has that hesitation about maybe I should call her, maybe I'm doing something wrong, and he doesn't. But it gives him just a hair bit more. Uh, uh, humanity, even though he's still a dick, just it gives him just a tinge more of you know uh, of of the he's not an all all out completely oblivious guy. Gotcha. So it's those those are the those those are, those are the kind of the processes. There are things that you don't know how you're going to do, and that that again comes from you know dealing with Sharknado, where you know you you come to set and you find out you don't have eighty of the things you need, and you got to come up with something on the fly. So so there's some work writing stuff where. We didn't know what we were going to have available to us or how we were going to achieve it. I had ideas of what we needed to do, but still, I saw all the pieces I wasn't going to be able to do it until we had that stuff in the day. Okay. Um, but, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, on a movie like this, it's less about the set pieces and it's more about the emotions. So you really, as a person, as a director, you're really looking at the character beats and making sure that they track and making sure that. Um, you know, the, the, their reactions and um, how they react to the situations are true and authentic. I was also the, uh, the editor of it, so I also could, you know, I, I would know when I had something on set. You know, I'm going, right. okay, I got that. We just need that one line. Let's move on. Well, that makes it easy, too. And you're not like, you don't sound like you're John Ford and having to do 175 takes of something. I mean, that's back in the day when, oh, no. <laughs> when he, um, Anthony C. Ferrant, uh, Ferrante joining us here, Jason Walker show. You also wrote the, uh, the, well, basically the music for this uh, movie, Bows of Holly, um, and the official music video performed by Quint, which is your band and featuring Karen, ba uh, Karen Bassett. You kind of do a little bit of everything here, Anthony. Well, you know, it started, uh, I'll say that uh, Clint is, uh, is myself and Robbie Ritz, who's my longtime uh, uh, musical writing partner, and we've been doing this since my first film. Um, a lot of, uh, look, what we do is I, I, I'm not a, on a big studio movie. You know, I'm on an independent film, and there's not a ton of money. And I learned that early on with my, my first films where we couldn't afford to license songs. You know, we go, hey, let's, we want Kathy Klein. We want Donovan Season of the Witch. It's like, yeah, that's going to cost you more money than the budget of their film. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay. And then um, I'm a musician, so that, that, that helps. But, um, but, you know, I would, I would look for stuff that we could afford, and it was always terrible stuff. And uh, Robbie, Robbie, I've known for years. You know, he, he's helped on a lot. He helped on all of my shorts, doing some additional music. And just to be, just to be clear, uh, the composers on the movie that did the actual score, not the songs, were uh, Chris Reidenauer, uh, Chris Bertano, and uh, uh, Shane Prather. I just want to make sure they get credit because okay. they did a great job. The stuff that we do are, are the songs. And um, so on those movies, it, it just was like, okay, well, Robbie said, just come over. We'll write our own stuff. So on my first movie, we wrote five, five little song things that were exactly what I wanted. I just wanted the sort of B.B. King-style blues. There was a sort of Patsy Klein thing that I did with another singer. Um, 
Uh, and um, we put it together, and the producers used, like, three of them, the two Kathy Klein things. They were like, why do you want to put Kathy Klein-like songs on this? This is a horror movie, and then every horror movie after that had Kathy Klein, so I guess I was on the right track. And the second movie was the same situation. We couldn't license songs, so we just did the stuff because we were doing, you know, bluegrass and gospel and stuff like that in the movie. And after that, it was just like, I, I just don't have the patience to to have to find stuff when we, you know, we, we're a self-contained unit. Robbie and I know music inside and out. We're, we're music junkies. And we can do different styles, and we have a lot of good singers. And so that just became a thing. And then the joke for the first three movies, we would always change the name of the band, like the band broke up, and it would always pertain to the film. Mm. And then when we did Sharknado, um, uh, we called ourselves Quint because of, um, you know, uh, Robert Shaw character and Jaws. And uh, I wrote with Robbie the theme song Sharknado, which is called The Ballad of Sharknado, which is a sort of Ramonesy kind of, you know, as I said, we got to write a song that if Ramones were still around, they would write for our movie. <laughs> and so it was like, go, 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 run away from the Sharknado. It's your greatest fo fo fo. Don't want to get eaten by Sharknado. Sharknado. So it was that kind of thing. Right. And that did really well. People, it actually is still getting tons of views, uh, listens on Spotify and everything. And so Robbie and I go, okay, I guess we're Clint now. So that became our, our, our full our full official band name. And then we have like 60 songs. Wow. And so we did, for this one, we did um, we did uh, Christmas music. And I had, we'd written a song five or six years ago called I Don't Want to Spend Christmas Without You, which is in the film. And then we wrote four originals for this movie, which was the theme song called Bows of Holly, uh, A Rock Little Santa, which is sort of a, a rockabilly thing, uh, A Mistletoe Sway, which is sort of like, a, there's a scene in the movie where they move away from the mistletoe. I'm going, That's, why has anyone done a Mistletoe Sway song, you know? <laughs> Call everybody do the Mistletoe Sway. Uh, and then a thing called Christmas Eve, almost Christmas Eve. Uh, so, so within those things, you know, we, we found something. And I wanted uh, Bows of Holly to be a very kind of Phil Spector, 1960s, uh, you know, wall of sound thing. And uh, I always say Robbie is, you know, I, like, I'm like Paul Westerberg. You know, I, I've been a musician, but I'm very rough and all over the place. And, you know, very, you know, just, I always do this. And then Robbie is, I, I say, he, he understands the math of music. So he's like, you know, Elvis Costello or Prince. I mean, yeah. he can figure everything out. So it's a really great balance between the two of us when we do these songs. Um, and we have a, we have a Joel Valdez fixes most of the stuff. Don Frankel comes in and plays the uh, piano and keys and occasionally, you know, Karen, Karen Kim's in and sings on some stuff. Robbie and I trade off on vocals. But when it's all said and done with these songs in there, it works towards what's going on in the film. So in a weird way, uh, all the songs that we've done for my films is sort of like a musical because lyrically and content wise, it's all fitting into what's going on thematically with the film. So I think that's what's always been fascinating to me. Because you're just sitting down to write a song. It's like, hey, let's write a song. It's like, what are we going to write about? But hey, I'm writing, I have a movie about someone with amnesia. Okay, well, look, I've got, we got Second Chance. We've got Perfect Memories. we got uh, Peace of My Mind. we got all these songs that just kind of kind of flow, you know. And for right. Christmas, you know, the, the Rock Little Santa thing was like, how come no, no one's done Rock Little Santa? That's actually really a cool little little thing. And uh, let's do a rockabilly style. And we did it in all the 60s and 50s, so that also adds to sort of the, the style, so it sort of adds to the feel of the movie. That is, um, that's just fantastic. Um, like I said, I, I missed the original airing, but I am going to watch it this week, Sunday, 9, 8 central on Ion Television, and then it'll be on 3 in the afternoon Eastern time on um, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. And uh, you can go to iontelevision.com uh, to find it, but uh, it is called Bows of Holly. Anthony C. Ferrante, uh, appreciate your time, my man. And uh, what's your project? Because I know you were on set yesterday. So what's the next project we're on? Uh, no, I'm, I'm prepping something. I have, a, I have a horror movie coming up um, at the end of uh, January that I'll be directing. Okay. So, um, so that's, what, that's what kind of I'm working on. I'm kind of doing a lot of prep on some other stuff right now, trying to get things ready for next year. Um, but oh, but let, one last thing. Not only were we filming a movie in the summer, we were filming a movie in the pandemic. <laughs> That's yeah. <laughs> it, it, the, the the summer the summer thing was the easy part. Having to get tested every day and losing an hour and a half to two hours a day trying to make sure everybody was one hundred percent safe. 
that that's hard. That that actually was the toughest part of the whole show because you you want everybody to be safe. Right. And with that, you have to have these protocols and these safety protocols to make sure it happens. So forget about making it Christmas in the summer. It was just trying to make sure everybody's wearing masks, making sure everybody's, you know, testing, making sure, you know, it's six feet apart on set so we can all get back to making movies. So anyway, thank well, you so much. I appreciate well, it. Well, so how do you, did, you didn't go all Tom Cruise, did you? Oh, no. I mean, well, no, but, but the thing is, is that, look, here's the thing. I, I, I don't know. I know that everybody has a lot of opinions about, about, about the cruise thing, but you got you to gotta think that if someone gets to that point, there had to be like two or three or four other points that mm-hmm. weren't heard to get him to that point. That no one goes, unless they're completely psychopathic, no one goes, you know, from zero to that. Right. So it's, you know, he's a producer on the show. He, he, they had an outbreak previously on, uh, I guess, in Italy, or they had a shutdown in Italy. They, it's not like, you know, we're, we're, we're spent, you know, our money that we spend in this movie is like the craft service budget for one day on one of his shows. He, he's got billions of dollars at stake. Right. And if someone isn't following protocol and they're not listening, you, you know, you have to, you have to, you know, crack the whip a little bit. Yeah, maybe he's a little... Uh, a, a little more aggressive than, than some people would possibly do. But, you know, he's, you know, the, everything he said was correct. Yeah, know, I, I 100% it, agree. It, so, you know, it's the, the thing is, is it's the same thing in general of what they've been trying to deal with, with, you know, the safety out there as well. You know, a lot of us, you know, we work from project to project. We don't have day jobs, you know. We don't work in an office or whatever. But what we're trying to do is find a way back from the pandemic to be able to do our job. And there's a lot of, you know, craft people, you know, just you know, behind the below the line that, that uh, you know, this is, this is how they need to survive. So we have to find that infrastructure because they don't have a cushion. They don't have, you know, uh, uh, companies that can pay them to continue to work. They're day by day. And that's what uh, the, the, these, these experiments and tests have been about, about trying to make movies again. And I think that by doing what we're doing, also I think can be a sort of thing for moving forward with other businesses. Because really, what is it that we're doing? We're, we're testing, you know, very, very, uh, very, very frequently uh, every other day. We're wearing masks. Um, we're keeping distance, we're having prepackaged food. So, you know, we can do this, you know, if, it, but the thing is it comes out of our budget. Right. That's what, it, it doesn't mean that we get extra money on top of our budget. It's part of the budget. So we have less to do it, but we still get to make movies. A, a normal business like a restaurant, they need help. They can't just go, you know, on top of it, then I'm going to do all the testing and get all this gear and all that stuff. There has to be a balance to, to make it work. And you can only imagine Look, we had probably uh, maybe a crew. Can't, I, I, I'm just guessing, you know, probably maybe between 30 and 40 people. Tom Cruise has got a crew of 300 people. So imagine, like testing testing 30 people is one thing. Testing 300 people every day or every other day, that's insane. And so someone not wearing a mask or not taking it seriously, it can be maddening. So. Well, like I well, said, I completely agreed with what he said, and I just uh, agree with what you just said as well. I, I just I, I appreciate you guys still trying to give us entertainment um, in in this time. But um, would love to get you back on to talk anytime you have a movie or a project you want to chat about. You've got my number now, so um, I think this uh, I think that would be awesome to uh, to to have you on even more, my man. Uh, no, I would love to, and I appreciate the support, and thanks for having Jennifer on last week, and, uh, you know, we'll, we definitely will talk again. That is Anthony C. Ferrante, the director of Bows of Holly, airing on Ion Television Sunday night and then again on Christmas Eve afternoon. And uh, he also did uh, directed all six Sharknado movies. Now, if you haven't heard yet, um, the Tom Cruise rant from the set of Mission Impossible 7 here it is. Sanders, you're back here in Hollywood making movies right now because of us. Because they believe in us and what we're doing. I'm on the phone with every studio at night. Insurance companies. Producers. And they're looking at us and using us to make them.
down movies. We are creating thousands of jobs, you I don't ever want to see it again. Ever. And if you don't do it, you're fired. And if I see you do it again, you're gone. And anyone on this crew does it. That's it. And you too. And you too. And you. Don't you ever do it again. That's it. No apologies. You can tell it to the people that are losing their homes because our industry is shut down. It's not going to put food on their table or pay for their college education. That's what I sleep with every night. In the future of this industry. So I'm sorry, I'm beyond your apologies. I have told you, and now I want it. And if you don't do it, you're at We are not shutting this movie down! Is it understood? If I see it again, you're gone. And so are you. So you're going to cost him his job. And I see it on the set, you're gone. And you're gone. That's it. Am I clear? Do you understand what I want? Do you understand the responsibility that you have? Because I will deal with your reason. And if you can't be reasonable, and I can't deal with your logic, you're fired. That's it. That is it. I trust you guys to be here. That's it. Isn't he awesome, you guys? What? So that's uh, the voice of Tom Cruise on set of Mission Impossible 7. And uh, he's upset. And rightfully so. Look, just follow the rules. That's all, that's all you have to do. It, it's no different than being on a movie set in Italy or wherever they're filming MI7 right now, or being in the stands at the jungle or the Bears Den or Vigilante watching kids. Just wear your mask. That's all you got to do. Literally. Uh, all right. Today is uh, the 17th of December. It is Maple Syrup Day. It is Wright Brothers Day. On this date in 1903, the Wright Brothers made the first sustained motorized aircraft flight 1035 in the morning, piloted by Orville. Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Uh, 1983, in his 352nd game, Wayne Gretzky scored a goal and five assists to record his 800th point and his 500th assist. In 352nd game. And then three years later on this date, in 1986, he had four goals, including a natural hat trick in the first period. And uh, it was his 41st hat trick. 1978, happy birthday, Manny Pacquiao, the uh, boxer, politician from the Philippines. 2003, Otto Graham passed away, the NFL quarterback of a uh, heart aneurysm. Sammy Baugh passed away on this date in 2008, the great football player. Happy birthday, Bill Pullman, the actor from uh, Independence Day, President Independence Day. And uh, he used to be a professor of drama at Montana State University. Yes. We're almost at the end of the show. What did we learn? And what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. All right. Great um, show today. All thanks to you guys. Trevor Funseth, The Mop. And we'll find out tomorrow more on this investigation of allegations of cheating against the Montana State gaming guys that won a national championship last night. Ebates from Grand Canyon University will join us tomorrow. Um, and hopefully we hear from Barstool Game Time tomorrow as well. Uh, Senator Steve Danes joined us, and uh, also Director Anthony C. Ferrente. Tomorrow, like I said, Ebates. We'll talk more about the College Gaming Championship allegations. The mop says, categorically denies there was any cheating. We might talk about Christmas movies tomorrow as well. And who knows what else we'll have in store. It is the Jason Walker Show. We are presented by Capital Collision Center. Montana State Law says it is your vehicle. It is your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center. See you tomorrow at 4.
Go to jasonwalkershow.com to rewatch, re-listen, or just say hi. We'll see you tomorrow. The Jason Walker Show is produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of the Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy.